Good afternoon, everybody. I am Christy Witt, and I am with Talk To Me Technologies. We are a proud member of the Smartbox family. Um, I am a speech language pathologist, and I've been with TTMT now for about three and a half years. And I'm super excited to um, share with you the proprietary vocabulary sets that Talk To Me Technologies has. And they were created by speech language pathologists right at TTMT. One of the things that I am most proud of um, with uh, Talk To Me Technologies is the wide variety of vocabulary sets that we have available um, on our devices so that when speech language pathologists are doing their feature matching evaluation, there are several options available to truly do that strong feature match um, to meet the skills and needs of each individual and unique patient or client. Um, and so I'm really excited to share with you some of our proprietary vocabulary sets today. Um, I, it's going to be a brief overview. Uh, so I would also like to invite you to go to booth 613 um, and come and see us. We would like to share it more in depth with you um, and to give you a chance to actually interact with them. Um, I think you'll be as impressed with them as I am. All right, so one of the first vocabulary suites that I want to talk about today is our Quick Step vocabulary files. Um, Quick Step uh, was created to help the communicator create messages in an efficient way with fewer taps on a screen and less navigation required. So this works really well for communicators who may have difficulty with focus and attention um, because when we're creating messages one word at a time, that, caught, that um, requires our communicators to have a lot of focus and attention on a screen to find, visually scan through um, every single word. Um, what you're going to find is as a communicator is creating a message in Quick Step, um, the messages are uh, you end up with a grammatically correct sentence um, by putting in chunks of language. So for example, I might want to say, I want to eat a cookie, because that's not really untrue. I wouldn't turn one down right now. Um, and another thing I love about this is I could use this period right here it will say the entire sentence um, all at once, and it also promotes literacy um, with adding that period to your sentence. But as you can see, you're creating messages with either three or four taps on a screen instead of touching it for every single word of the message, which helps with that um, uh, efficiency of creating a grammatically correct sentence. A lot of feedback that we've been receiving from speech therapists out in the field is that this vocabulary set seems to work well with our Gestalt language processors. Um, and the reason for that is the putting messages together in those groups or chunks of language. Um, so for example, up in this area is a really important part of this vocabulary set. It's like our quick phrases. So when you go in here, it's things that our communicators are going to say often and will want to get to pretty quickly. Um, so things like, um, I need help, really fun social things like, that's cool, or see you later, alligator. Um, but then this would be a great place to program their personal gestalts. Um, and then as a speech language pathologist is working with them to help them become a more flexible communicator. You can come back into our homepage and you already have chunks of language um, already on your homepage and so you don't have to go through the work of programming those uh, chunks of language. So for example, if I had um, somebody who had a full unit of language of I want to go home, that full unit could be programmed up in here and then as a speech therapist, I can start to model um, the different chunks of how that full unit of language is put together by saying, I want to go home. So now you see that has been from one large unit of language down to three. And then when you want to break that down even further, another great place, I'm sorry? Oh, absolutely, I'll go a little slower. So from the home screen, I want, so your carrier phrases are off to the left. 
When you go to the middle of the screen, that's where you're going to find that middle part of your sentence. So you can see there's to drink, to eat, to go, help. So to go was right here. And then it automatically changes to that communicator's favorite things, which is really helpful. They didn't have to then also think of the category places. They didn't have to do I want to go places and then home. It automatically changed it. Um, so that brought it down to um, three touches or three units of language. And then when you're ready to break that down even further to support more flexibility, you come in this second row in the middle. You see this area that says sentence building. When you pop in here, you're going to see that a unit of language is now done to one, down to one single word. Um, so this really does support um, that communicator at all levels of that Gestalt language processing. So that's why we're getting some really good feedback from our SLPs that this has been a really nice vocabulary set to work with. Um, another thing about um, our Quick Step files is Quick Step does grow with our communicators. Um, you can have as few as the way we have it set up now is four buttons on a page up to max, which is around 50. So sometimes we work with communicators that have a hard time visually scanning through multiple buttons on a page. Um, and so we might want to start with fewer buttons um, and then work their way up as uh, their skill in that area increases. Um, so quick step files, we um, work with people across the age span. So that we found that this has been um, really a good match for uh, pediatrics, but also as well as adults who need text, but some symbol-based support as well. Our quick step files, um, some of them are also translated into Spanish. Um, and then another area is um, we have our quick step files in um, high contrast symbols to meet people with cortical visual impairment or other visual impairments. You see this one has um, yellow on black, um, but we are able to make that happen in whatever um, color scheme um, that the vision specialist has said has worked best for that patient. So if someone sees something better red on white, um, that can be changed, and we can do that right in-house. We have a team that can help with that. So really, essentially, all of our vocabulary sets are very highly customizable, and our team is um, ready and willing to help with making those customizable customizations. Another vocabulary program that I want to share with you today is our Universal Core Vocabulary Suite. Um, just as the name of the vocabulary suite um, says, it is a uh, vocabulary set that is uh, organized with core words. So right on our home page, you have our most used core vocabulary. Um, obviously, there are additional core vocabulary um, available, so you can come over here on the right-hand side to find more core. And it's really easy to toggle into more core and then back home to that main core just by going to that main home page. Um, there is word prediction in this second line, um, which is extremely helpful. So as you're creating your message, you can see the words in that second line changing um, to um, words that might come most often come next um, in a sentence. Um, you have this area up here called quick phrases. You saw that in our previous vocabulary program as well. You have it here too. Um, it's such an important place to be for that efficient access to the messages that are most important to our communicators. Um, and you can have access to that on any page that you happen to be on. So if you're in foods, you're going to see you have access to those quick phrases. So there's not additional navigation that has to happen in order for them to have that efficient communication for those. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is our morph button. Um, so when you put a word into the message bar and you touch the morph button, in your message, um, your word prediction area, you'll see that you have all the forms of that word um, available so that you can create your grammatically correct sentence in that way as well. Um, I personally, when I was working um, clinically, uh, I had a little guy with childhood apraxia of speech um, who used this program really well because of the robustness of the communication system. Um, he was able to utilize that um, 
word prediction area extremely well, uh, and he actually learned it quicker than I did, <laughs> um, which sometimes... Uh, it was really nice to see him come in at for speech therapy each time, and he showed me some new things. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm supposed to be the professional here and the expert, but yet you're coming in and showing me and your family that you actually know this better than I do. Um, but that's just what they do. I mean, once they're with this and live with it every day, they find ways to get to the words that they use and need most. And sometimes their pathway to get to those words is different than the pathway I would have taken. Um, and it's take, it took a while in my career to sit back and say, let them have that device for a little bit. Let them figure their own way to that word. And then they surprise me. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that was a great way to get to that word. Um, but yeah, this worked really well for him um, in, um, in therapy. Again, with our universal core um, vocabulary sets, it also grows um, with our patients. So you can have 25 buttons on a page, and then as language grows, you would just pop back out into your grid explorer, um, and you would go over, uh, and then you could move up to 60, 36 buttons on a page, and then all the way up to our max, which I think is around 50 again. Um, so again, another great option. Um, to meet those unique and specific skills and needs of all of our individual people that we work with. The next group or suite of um, vocabulary set that I want to share is our onward vocabulary. Um, onward text, this one is set up in a text-based program. So this is for um, people who prefer to type out full words um, in order to communicate. You know, we have uh, several people who really appreciate the simple support and full text space, but there are a lot of people out there um, who do want to type their novel messages um, out all on their own. What I really love about this vocabulary set is we have both word prediction at the top, and we also have phrase prediction. So I have two little dogs at home. Um, one is named Wilson, and the other one's name is Higgins. Um, and I talk about them all the time. I don't feel like I've talked about them enough at this conference, so here I go. Um, with Wilson and Higgins, I would say, come here, Wilson, come here, Higgins, you know, multiple times a day. It would not, and because it's learned prediction, it wouldn't take long for the um, program itself to recognize that that's what I'm going to be um, wanting to say, and it'll come up in phrase prediction for you. Now, I am going to tell you my dogs listen just as well when I use a speech generating device as I do with my own voice, which is not hardly at all. So that's just how that goes. Um, also, in um, Onward uh, QWERTY, uh, we have the access to the keyboard with word prediction and phrase prediction, um, but we also have access to my phrases again. Again, we need to have the ability to get to efficient access to communication that's really important and words and phrases that are used often. So when you come into my phrases here, um, it's organized in categories that are important, and these can be highly customizable. So if you have a favorite NFL football team, you can have a whole category based on that um, football team or sports um, all together. Um, I was working with a gentleman who was in farming, um, and he had an entire um, category in here about his farm, and we were even able to put in pictures of the map of his farm so that when he was talking to people, he could pull up the map and pinpoint, you know, the area of his property that he was um, wanting to talk about, which was really helpful. So these are all highly customizable. And what's also really awesome about this one is it is highly customizable and easy for the communicator themselves to share, to save their own message. So if I had put this message all together, because I would say that often, um, I would wanna save that maybe in my foods area, in um, my phrases. This is how quick and easy the communicator can do that. You go into my phrases, you find the category that you would wanna save that in, under food. There's a save button. When you touch save, it brings you a blank box. You touch the blank box, and there it is. So I've had communicators put an entire story of an event up in the message bar, and they know they want to tell it to their spouse, 
but then also their children on the next phone call or somebody that comes to visit. Instead of having to retype that entire event out again, they quickly go into their category, they hit save, they put it here, and then when they see that next person they want to tell it to them, it's quick and efficient communication for that. Um, so it's really um, a great feature of this vocabulary set. Yes? So some of our vocabulary sets, so you mean like putting the symbol up into the message bar? So as they're texting, then the symbol, the symbol uh, that goes with that word also goes up into the message bar so they can see the symbol as well. Um, some of our vocabulary sets have that option. Um, and I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, I think um, one way that we can look into that too is when we meet with you, like when our consultant meets with you, we can find that vocabulary set that best meets the needs, their unique needs, and then um, dig into that to see if that particular vocab set has that option. Um, because some of them will have the option to put that um, picture up in the message bar and then others um, don't have that option as part of it. That's a great question though, yeah. Yeah, that's a great feature. Yeah, I think that's definitely something that when you're working with a consultant or whatever, we would definitely look into that to see if it's an option, and especially if that's something that's really important, to find that as a feature of your vocabulary set. Um, so yeah, really good question. And then the final vocabulary suite that I want to talk about is our Zoom vocabulary suite. Um, and there's just a couple within here that I want to highlight and then invite you again back to booth 613 um, to come and chat with us so we can give you some hands-on experience too. Um, but Zoom Basic, when you take a look at Zoom Basic, um, this is set up into categories. You can see that there is symbol support. But when you go into the categories here, you're going to see that a full message is created using either one or two buttons. And this can be customized in any way. Um, so uh, hello, how have you been? Those are all full messages on one button. Um, so these, uh, this vocabulary set was created for somebody, like we've um, seen it used a lot for somebody who has aphasia and just needs a lot of support, um, cognitive support with getting that language, um, uh, all of their language on a, on a button um, available. Um, other things is you have that yes and no right on the main screen. This particular one has the keyboard in alphabetical order, but because we can customize things so easily, um, you could just let us know if you wanted that in a QWERTY um, keyboard way, and we can get that set up too. Um, so Zoom Basic. And then the other one in here that I wanted to show is Zoom Core. Sometimes when you first take a look at this one, you're like, I already saw the eyes. I saw the, oh my gosh, that's a lot. And it, it, it is. It's a lot to look at. But when you really take a look at this and see how it's organized left to right like literacy, and it's full words on one button and it's text, um, you can really have a lot of words on one page. And so what that means is there's less navigation to get to those words. So sometimes when we're working, um, uh, I hear, oh, we need to have fewer buttons on a page, fewer buttons on a page. But sometimes that actually sets people up for it to be more complex because what you're, what's happening is you have to navigate in so far to find the word that you're looking at. But when you look at something like this, there is a lot of words. Right on this home page, you might be able to put an entire sentence together without navigating off of it at all. Um, there's another great area here. It's in our Zoom. This has some really nice social things. Good idea. You're right. That rules. Um, it's a shame, and I know. Uh, and then another area here, again, gets us to those quick phrases um, that we talk about a lot. So there are things that people just need to have efficient communication to get to. 
And that Zoom core, I, it, does anyone have any questions? Those are just some of the vocabulary suites and we'd love to get into them a little bit more depth. Again, that's 613, come and see us, yeah. That's a really great question. So she asked, um, Universal Core and Quick Step ends at 50 buttons on a page, and she was wondering, are there anything in the works to go more? Um, I don't know the answer about anything in the works, but what I can tell you is, if you need more, we can help make that happen. Um, there's ways to add columns and rows, so if you need more, we can help make that happen. Yeah. Oh, hide them. Yeah, so her question is, is there, is there ability to mask or hide buttons so if there are too many? Yes, um, which is a really important feature, especially when you're looking at that um, motor placement. You know, we want to make sure if we're going to add more later that we're not changing where the previous placement of, of vocabulary is. So you can start with more buttons on a page, but then hide the ones that you're not currently using so that when you bring them back, it doesn't change where they are. Great question. Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you all for coming. Please come and see us. <laughs> thank you.